Hello everybody, I like to get you an update on one of my projects I'm currently um, running at the moment. <clears throat> what you see here in front of you is a Phenotron tube. It's also used in the famous uh, medical device um, from Rife, also called a Rife tube. This is a replication um, from Bill Chep in, in Canada from the famous 1939 version and is adapted to my specifications um, for my specific experiments I would like to conduct. Um, the system I gonna use or the tube I gonna use will not um, be under investigation for medical purpose reason but from a, from a wave propagation and from an energy um, propagation point of view. Uh, some of you might remember that I wanted to show you um, the wave propagation within a vacuum tube uh, where actually the, the waveforms should be visible to a certain extent in a plasma tube. This is a, a bit different here because um, this tube contains helium and is um, a very <coughs> precise and very accurate form which can sustain high amounts of energy in the system whereas the plasma tube had only um, a small amount of, of gas mixture inside and uh, there was almost um, no difference to the atmospheric pressure so the propagation of the wave was completely different it was more like it would be in a non-atmosphere what we're gonna see here, what I'm gonna show is how um, the waves from different sides of my coils will become uh, visible inside the tube. Let me run through, run you through um, the setup here briefly. You see again the coils I was using in my previous experiments before. <coughs> so we have. On this side we have the counterclockwise rotating wave coming and on the other side we have the clockwise uh, rotating wave coming. For those of, of you knowing um, the right hand rule where the winding on a solenoid coil you see the direction of the wave propagation this is indicating you north, a north pole from a magnetic field point of view the opposite way would be the south pole. So here that is representing north pole side. So I expecting to see here a positive um, wave propagation form or mainly positive. And on the other side I expect um, a negative form. Both coils on primaries are connected to each other. So literally the initiation or literally the excitation of the primaries is done synchronous. They're both um, excited at the same time. So the wave will be accelerated at the same time um, in counter um, clockwise rotation to each other. Let me show you um, the different setup I have here to, to uh, demonstrate that. For um, the excitation of the Tesla coils I'm using here solid state technology. It makes it easy and simple. Um, here on a left hand side you see um, it's a DC um, power supply, 120 volt. Only one watt, so it gives, it's 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 low current, 120 watt maximum. Um, IRF uh, 450, plenty of them. Um, here my example, I use only one. It's good enough. So I it can take up to 400 volt but with lower current um, this is a power supply used for my driver those of you um, if you want to look up um, configuration and, and diagrams please uh, have a look at my LMD video which I done two years ago where I use this driver and actually also this MOSFET I use a DSO 
which gives me much more details and information about the wave and again my digital um, signal generator I start with 60 volt on the output side yes it's a waveform you currently can see um, it's 100 kilohertz at the moment and you will see a slight glow yeah you can see it quite nicely here 100 kilohertz and let me increase the frequency or low let's go let's go that makes it easier to see let's increase the voltage to 30 volt so I have now exact 30 volt so that's quite nice to see so we have a small glow on both sides reddish a bit and um, small current draw and 56 watt so that's the waveform you currently see I take the measurement here let's take it in the middle exactly in the middle between the tube so I have here a delay in here so that you can see it easier as the wave propagates let's now increase the frequency a bit to see how it works so I'm going up the range so it's about 127 kilohertz at the moment 150 kilohertz. What you can see is the frequency. Um, that's one of the one of the um, properties of the tube is you will ha you will get a glow independent of the frequency. But I am under uh, under something. I'm up um, to achieve something very specific. I want to have actually a focus point between both of them. Where the waveforms hit each other, so that needs to have a specific synchronization. And I'm not sure if I can achieve that with the coils I produced at the moment because they're not built to the specific requirements, but it gives me an indication. So that's my first test here, literally. So I'm still um, at, the, at, the, at the area how to find out <clears throat> what would be the best process and how I can improve on that. So we are at 170 kilohertz at the moment. See here, 174. It's increasing beam. Go higher, 184. Looks like you have always um, so the waveform is increasing. I see it on the, on the bottom on the DSO. 250. So that's quite strong now on a DSO. Let's go back. So that's very strong. Looks lower, but the wave I see on the DS, DSO, for example, is much stronger. See if we can see that. It's quite strong here. I go up. So that's 350. So in a bit, you can see it better. So let me go up here to see until we have something very strong. Go up all the range. The glow is still is, is continuous up. So there's still a glow running on the system. So that's getting quite strong now. A little bit more. 500. So that is now getting stronger and stronger. I see here on the score, the output. But that is on. That's a very very nice wave now. You have 584 at the moment. The wave is here quite strong. And here on the tube, I see it is nice as well. Let me increase frequency further. Okay, let's focus on the 
on the scope for a sec. So let's get a, uh, create a hit. So I should said um, I had made some tests and I saw it's around 1200, 1.2 megahertz. Let's skip to this area. Here you go. 1.7. That's a globe currently. Let me leave it as that and let me increase now the voltage. From 30 volt I go higher. Yeah now you see nice. The color changes, it gets colder. I'm at 60 volt at the moment. 70 volt. Let's keep it at that. 70 volt. Oh now that's a very very strong field here. Let's go back. And that's what you see now in the middle. So that's literally the wave in the middle between both of them and a tendency stronger on a minus side. You see here overall um, energy levels. You can read them on the right hand side. Now let me go with a scope probe to both sides of the tube to show you the difference. I have it now at 1.2 MHz. The electrode on the left hand side has this kind of peak as you can see here. And I measure it here on the left hand side. So the ray intensity is quite high now and the radiation is very low. Um, the tube does actually convert all radio frequency into magnetic energy. So but you have to tune it to the right frequency. So what I have done here so one or two megahertz is actually is, is quite consistent and radiation is very very low radiation from an RF point of view. So that is the left hand side or let's say it's a positive side. Again quite strong. Now let's put it put it on the other side. And what you see here now is the tendency exactly as mentioned negative. So you have literally the peak always on the minus side so that's the south pole. So you literally have, if you want to have, with the different coils here, you have a um, south pole on the right hand side and a north pole on the left hand side or minus right and positive or plus on the left hand side. So radiation is very low. So on this frequency band, if you want, it's almost nothing. So it's strong on the left hand side, on the positive side. If I go closer, you see here. But if I go do that on the right hand side, nothing. There is nothing here. I don't get any kind of um, RF radiation. Only here, of course, that comes out from, from the coil. But that's literally neutralized in the system. And I get a beam on in the middle, so at a different frequency range here, um, at 1.7 I get it up to here exactly in the middle so if I go a little bit aside I have nothing anymore so that's what I'm after I'm after a very very strong beam which actually is focused in the middle and radiating out but that is actually something I'm interested in and that's something I would like to measure um, the coils are not grounded that means you have a extension out on a, on a back side. So it's free swinging if you want. It's like a swing right and left side without any connectivity. So it, it swings free. Very important open source. 
open system not connect to anything so he says you can see here here in the middle nothing it's literally neutralized all the waves are neutralized inside uh, to each other via this tube